I'm sure it feels very real to you. On August 29th, 1997, it's gonna feel pretty fucking real to you, too. Anybody not wearing two million sunblock is gonna have a real bad day, get it? Good, you think you're safe and alive? Back by Sim on the clock with us. Yeah, in the ancient Hebrew tongue, those will be the correct names of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. Also, I'd like to get double honors to our teachers, the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the fellow laborers out there. And as always, you believers. So yeah, we back once again through the spirit and power of your help by Shemel Shah. As you can see, I'm with the brother Barak. The spirit is on us once more to go into another quick lesson, which in this sitting right here, we wanted to briefly speak to what seems to be the hot topic of late and chiefly amongst the church in relation to the year, which is being 2024, which can very well potentially be the year in which the scriptures coined as the time of Jacob's trouble, which will serve as a scene, if you will, in this drama, in which the heavenly father will eventually recompense the two thirds of the nation of Israel for their abominable ways. And that's actually outlined in the book of um, What's that, Ezekiel, the seventh chapter? Matter of fact, uh, let's let's have that queued up. Ezekiel, the seventh chapter, and beginning at the first verse. Because unbeknownst to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans out there, there is a day of reckoning for all the partying and bullshitting and shucking and jiving. The Lord's actually going to recompense you, man. And guess what? We will be in the midst of that time where the Lord will eventually visit you for your trespasses, transgressions, and overall rebellious nature. And this is what contributes to the fear of the Heavenly Father. It's heavy when you think about it. The Lord is briefing us concerning these things, uh, their um, ways are on display for us to see and evaluate and assess so that the Lord might be justified when he bring forth that judge. Matter of fact, you got it up. Come on the book of Ezekiel chapter seven, verse one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, also thou son of man, thus said the Lord power unto the, unto the land of Israel. Right, unto the land of Israel. So this is a death threat, if you will, huh. directed towards the land of Israel. Now, for those of us in the know, we understand that Israel is a people before it's a place. Right? Continue. The end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Right, the four corners of the land, which this pretty much sets you in a certain time frame. The four corners of the land, we understand that this is concerning wherever you Israelites might be driven and scattered to, but chiefly right here in America, being the far west, the uttermost part of the earth. So this is the time. That's why that word in is synonymous with this declaration. Come on, Bob. Come It says, now is the end come upon thee. Yeah, hey, this is a living document we deal with. This is that time. Now, right? And it makes sense because when you evaluate the nature of our people, their sins have reached the all time high, man. And guess what? We have footage, we got proof. We're gonna bring it out through the spirit, you know? Come on, Ak. 
God. It says, now is the end come upon thee, and I will send my anger upon thee, and, and will judge thee according to thy ways. Right, that word judge being mashapat in the Hebrew. So the Lord is going to uh, judge you. You're not just going to continue to uh, perform as you wish, and there will not be a, a reckoning, a recompense. Hey, even when you read the book of Revelation, the 22nd chapter, it tells you how Yahweh Shai is coming to bring his reward with him. He's going to reward you for your good, and on the flip side, your bad. Right? So for those who have spiritually invested, if you will, into Yahweh Shai by believing on the report, and wholeheartedly and fully committing to our Lord, reverencing the Son as commanded. And that's pursuant to the book of Psalms, the second chapter, where you will be rewarded with uh, salvation. But on the flip side, those who reject our Lord, Yahweh Shah, you're going to be rewarded with the evils. Come on, Khan, it says, and will recompense upon thee all thy abominations. Right, so the Lord is going to recompense. When you go into the word recompense, it literally translates to pay back. That word re meaning back and compense going back to the word compensation. So the Lord is going to literally pay you back, man. And that's another word to, to focus on that places this at the scene of the crime, this, this time frame. Because when you pay someone back, it's after the fact. You see it? But again, the Lord said he's going to judge you according to thy ways. Real quick, click on that word, ways. Spirit got on me earlier to do a lesson concerning that very matter. Because your mind frame, uh, the state of your reasoning is compared to a way. Why? Because it has a destination. Come on. Kind of word way scrolls H1870 way road distance journey manner right so your manner is on par with your way the road you have embarked on which has an end and is heavy that end can be in its totality right you have uh 500 people to die in an apartment fire, you know, you know, some crazy mass death situation. But then that end can be individually. You hear stories of guys who uh, are put to death. You know, they started off their day with a blunt and, and it ended at Circle K, sprawled out in the parking lot. But that was the end of the road. Niggas are still sacrificing unto devils to this very day. Just real quick, not to sway off of anything, but I was just looking that up, you know, uh, what this really, the so-called New Year goes back to, goes back to Janus. Before you right. read that, can I get a definition of pagan for you? Well, you got it, brother. This is from the Edelman Online. Pagan, it means a person of non-Christian or non-Jewish faith. It says, uh, that's the main point because paganism doesn't have anything to do with the scripture, man. So when you partake in these different pagan holidays and customs, you're you're giving yourself to idolatry, man. That's it. But Jake, don't give a damn. But hey, I was just looking this up briefly here. It says Janus, Roman god of the new year. So that's really what it goes back to. All right, because really all these holidays are just a mashup of uh, of, of paganism. You know, going back to uh, the winter solstice. Yeah. Going back to Sat Saturnalia. Going back to Nimrod, uh, Semiramis, Tammuz, the ancient and Canaanite uh, uh, deities. You see what I'm saying? So Jake is full, fully immersed in idolatry. But anyway, reading on here, it said, I, I had a little bit more slot in it. Oh, you got it, brother. It says the English word was used later, later in a narrow sense of one, not a Christian, Jew, or Muslim, as person of heathenistic character or habits applied to modern pantheists or nature, work, nature worshipers from 1908. It says pagan and heathen are primarily in the same meaning, but pagan is sometimes distinctly applied to those nations that, although worshiping false gods, are more cultivated as the Greeks and Romans and heathen to uncivilized idolaters as the tribes of Africa. 
So just further, further, further proving the fact that, you know, this pagan, this pagan custom don't have anything to do with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. At all. That's right. So it says here, uh, Jen is Roman God of the new year who sees both yesterday and tomorrow. All right. <laughs> new year, new me, right? Exactly. It's a two-faced God. All right. What you see in the society, a lot of two-faced people, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's all spiritual. It says, um, I'm just going to get straight to the point. We'll get back to what we was talking about. <clears throat> so it said, who? It says, who was the Roman god Janus? It says, deriving from the Latin uh, Aina, meaning door or gateway. Janus, Janus' very name highlights his role as the guardian of transitions, overseeing all beginnings and endings. You see that? So as it is right now, we're in that transition of a so-called new year. All right, which is not really even the new year. The new year comes into the, in the springtime, man. That's right. Right. The, the new year is not held in the, in the dead set of the winter time, man. All right. But anyway, it says, and this is why everybody's in this in this fake spirit of like, oh yeah, like you said earlier, this whole new year, new me, I'm gonna make a change. You know, after a couple of weeks, you the same nigga that you was back in 2020. <laughs> All right. You see what I'm saying? So it says, uh, this li the, how you said that word. Linguist, I can't pronounce that word. Linguistic. Linguistic, there you go, brother, the water. Connection underlines the fundamental concept of duality that Janus represents, not just in physical spaces, but in a metaphysical aspects of time in the human experience. It says, in Roman mythology, the dual face imagery of Janus is a potent symbol reflecting the God's ability to see the past and future simultaneously, right? Pagan. It says, and I'll read this last uh, paragraph here. It says, the, this unique aspect conveys the notion that all beginnings are inherently, inherently linked to endings. And every, and every entrance, entrance also serves as an exit. Okay. It says, Genesis dual, dual, uh, dual gaze symbolizes the continuous cycle of life and the interconnected nature of opposing concepts such as war and peace, youth and age, or chaos and order. All right, and you can read the rest. So this is all, it's all idolatry, man. Which yeah. niggas are into, man. Because you know? ultimately, what that is is them trying to, you know, uh, rip off from the characteristics of Yahweh. Of Yahweh. That's it. We know the, the Most High, well, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. All right, he's he's in control of duality for real. He creates mm -hmm. good and evil, life and death. You know, and all that. So that's right. that's just a. a, a, a I have been created to, to mimic the most high, man. That's it, man. All folly and, and, and foolishness, man. Can we get uh, Romans 13 and 11? Let's go with that, man. Because, hey, what's, so, what's been so heavy, even over the past day now, there's been a lot of crazy judgments going on, going out on Jake, man. Hell yeah. And during these holidays, it's like the worst time where Jake really gets judged, man. Show you that the Lord don't honor these, uh, these so-called holidays, man. These pagan days, you know? Uh, I got that precept. Go ahead. Uh, it's the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. This is what we telling you niggas out there, man. No, by knowing the time, it is a high time that you wake out of sleep, man. Come out of the world, man. Separate yourself from this world before it's too late. All yeah. right. The, it, it's clear. It's clear as day that the. the, the the grace of the most high, th those doors of grace are closing, man. All right? Time is running out to repent, to, to get your shit in order, Jake. Right? And you niggas still in the church. You still believe that a, a, a so-called white man about to break the clouds, come down from the heavens and save your black ass, man. When you gonna wake up? You know? Go ahead, Ab. Verse 11 in the latter says, For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Yeah, man, it's, our salvation is clearly nearer than we believe. Just to give you an example, right? Okay. This came out today. All right, it says, can the U.S. fight three major wars simultaneously? Right? Because as we see, uh, America's getting ready to go to war with Russia, China, and Iran. Mm -hmm. All right? Really, pretty much with all these nations, if you will. <laughs> right? So this is how we know, once again, that our salvation is nearer than we believe. And we'll read these articles a little bit later just to make that point. It says, goodbye 2023, but did Biden just say hello to World War III? Right? This is not a game. You go back out. Romans 13 and 12 
It says the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Right. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Yeah, let us cast off the works of darkness. This world, the folly, the ignorance, all the bullshit that you niggas are into, it's time to cast that off. All right, all these customs and all these different worldly, you know, vain things that have nothing to do with the most high. Yep. Right? Go ahead. It says, and let us put on the armor of light. Right, the armor of light going back to what? This truth, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Go ahead. Verse 13, it says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Go ahead. But put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Yeah, it's time, it's time to tame the flesh, man. It's time to kill off the old man. All right, can you read that for me, Baba Pasha? And the, uh, those last two verses in the NLT. Come. You know? This is the book of Romans chapter 13. And verse 13, it says, because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Yeah, all this, everything that you see, a lot of folly, a lot of, uh, a lot of wickedness is committed during these so-called holidays, man. You know, so this is the time that you're supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to be off this shit. You're supposed to be out of the, out of the world, man, separated from the world. Go ahead. Ari. Verse 14, instead, clothe yourselves with the presence of the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. And don't let yourself think about always Salakia. Don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. You got it, bro. You speak on it. God. So we have to put on this truth because this truth, pursuant to Romans, the 12th chapter, will begin to reform our minds. All right. With that reformation of mind, all right, you start to put on as the elect, which therefore separates you from the fashion of this world. That's all right. right. The scriptures tell you that two cannot walk together lest they be in agreement, pursuant to the book of Rome, uh, Amos, the third chapter. Right. Okay. So as we see this world going toward the left, all right, furthering into uh, Satanism, hey, we're diverging further and further from this world. God. Okay. And that's good because what we know to come to the ones that are continuing on in this anti Hamashiach system is going to be destruction and death. Yep. I got something to add to that. This is Exodus 23 and 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in the calling to decline after many to rest judgment. So, like you were saying, man, that we're not to follow the path of how we see everybody else in the world, you know, going because we know, like you said, they're, they're going in the ways of Satan, man. So we're supposed to be changing and reform, reforming our minds to walk after the ways of Yahweh, Yahweh, man. You know, so as we're you know, go go into these lessons, a uh, lesson to show how Jacob is, is further going into that path of, of evil and wickedness, man. This is just an even further admonishment from the Lord for the you sincere brothers and sisters out there, man. Hey, now is the time to get yourself right more than ever, man. Yeah. Kyle. yeah.